Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Is it well with you? Is it well with your soul? Emotions. Everything concerning you. Hallelujah. I was particularly moved by the song this morning. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, great to empower our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any our God is here, awesome in power, our God, our God. I have a very big God, He's always on my side, a very big God by my side. I, I have a very big God, He's always by my side, a very big God. Uh, I say I have a very big God, always by my side, a very big God, I'm a, I, yeah, yeah, I have a very big God, always by my side, it's a very big God, by my side, by my side, by my side, by my side, by my side. By my side, 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 I have a very big God, always by my side, a very big God, very big God, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, he's always by my side, a very big God, by my side, by my side, I have a very big God, just a moment. I just want to remind some of us who have lived in Africa, those who have lived in the Caribbean, even those who may not have lived there, but you've been in circles, African and Caribbean circles. We don't have a very big God, you. We have a very big God. you are supreme. There is none like you, O God. And Lord, we approach your word. We approach your word with reverence and with expectation, O God. We know, Father God, that your word was released to make to do us good. And we pray, O God, that this word will do us good today. Lord, I ask, O God, in the name of Jesus, that you anoint my lips to speak the word of the living God. I ask, O oh God, that you will give me the boldness to declare the things that you have laid in my heart. I pray, O oh God, that you will speak, that the voice that will be heard will be yours, but not mine. Lord, we give you praise. We ask, O oh God, that your name be magnified and that your people be blessed, even as we sit under your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the title of today's message is Our Exceedingly Abundant God. Our Exceedingly Abundant God. And the foundational scripture 
is Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 to 21. And it says this, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now unto him. So the word now speaks of relevance, the immediate relevance of what is to follow. So it's not talking about something we do in the future. It's not something about something that is forthcoming. It is something that is relevant now. Somebody say now. now. So now, at this very point of time, unto him. Unto. Unto means that is something that we need to focus on or something we need to put our attention to. So when it says now, it says this very moment onto put your focus, put your attention onto something or onto someone. And what is this something or someone that we are supposed to put our attention onto right now? Onto him. Or now onto him. So who is him? Who is him? Now let me give you a few reminders of who this him is. Him is the God who refers to himself in Exodus 3.14 as the I am that I am. In Genesis 15 verse 1, he said to Abraham, I am thy shield. And in Genesis 15 verse 7, he says, I am the Lord that brought thee out. He brought the children of Israel out of captivity. He's the one that brings you out of captivity. He's the one who brings you out of depression. He's the one that brings you out of oppression. He's the one that brings you out of poverty. He brings you out of sin. He brings you out of destruction. He is that one. He is the God that says in Exodus 31 verse 13, I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. In Psalm 46 verse 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. In Proverbs 8 verse 14, 8 14, he says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. So if you lack understanding in anything, any area, where do you go to him? Where do you go to? You go to him. You go to him. He has strength. In Isaiah 43 verse 15, Isaiah 43 verse 15, he says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 44 verse 6, he says, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. He did not say that in error. He did not say that by mistake. There is no other God than this God that we are talking about here in this, in, in this message. In Isaiah 44 verse 24, he says, I am the Lord that maketh all things. I stretch forth the heavens alone. I spread abroad the earth by myself. He did not need help. He did not need assistance. He stretched forth the heavens himself. He spread forth the heavens himself. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 48 verse 17, he says, I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit. He teaches us to profit. So if we want to profit, where do we go? We go to him. If we want to understand how to, how to enlarge, where do we go? We go to him. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 51 verse 12, he says, I, even I, am he that comforteth you. So in the day of comfort, where do we go? We go to him. In Isaiah 51 verse 15, Isaiah 51 15, he says, But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name. So he can part the sea. He can stretch forth the heavens. He can establish the, 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 the earth. He can speak mountains into being. He can level the valleys. What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 45 verse 22. Isaiah 45 22. He says, look unto me 
and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none else. He is unique. He's supreme. He's the only one. He's incomparable, indescribable. That is the kind of God that we're talking about. You cannot duplicate him. You cannot imitate him. You cannot say this is something like him that even comes close. He is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's our exceeding abundant God. Hallelujah. So he says, look unto me. The Hebrew word for look is pana, which means to regard, to have respect for. In Jeremiah 32, 27, he says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? The God of all flesh. It doesn't matter whether it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, green, yellow, purple, whatever your color, he is your God. Hallelujah. He's God of all flesh. And there is nothing too hard for him to do. That means that no matter how difficult that situation seems, it's easy for him. He doesn't even have to blink about it. He doesn't worry about it. If he desires to do it, it's just like that. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for him for him to do. And there is so much more that this God says about himself. This is the God that we are now meant to put our attention and focus on. Now. Now, since we cannot live in the past and we cannot live in the future, every moment is a now moment. Every moment is a now moment. We are living in the now. Amen? So that tells me that every now Every now, every moment, he is meant to be our focus. Hallelujah. Every moment is a now moment. Now unto him that is able. We have talked about now. We have talked about unto. We have talked about him. But you know that this him, this God that we serve, he is able. He is able. He is able. I said he is able. Hallelujah. What does it mean to be able? Able means to have the power, to have the skill, to have the means, the opportunity to do something. So this God is capable. Unlike the gods that are the work of men's hands. Let us read Psalm 115. Psalm 115 from verse 4. It says their idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they, neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. You may have heard the term dumb idols. Have you heard those terms, that term? Yes. Dumb idols. Yes. So the scripture says this. That they that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusts in them. So if the idols are dumb and those that make them are like them. What does that make those people who be those? Exactly. That's the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 90 verse 2 says about our God. In contrast with these idols. Unlike those were idols that are the work of men's hand. Our God is the creator. Who was not created. He was not created. So we contrast. We contrast. The creation of idols. By works the men's hands. With a God who was not created. Psalm 90 verse 2. Says about our God. Before the mountains were brought forth. Or ever that has formed the earth. And the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He did not say thou, you were God. Or you will be God. You are God. He has always been. Or like idols that have mouths but cannot speak. Psalm 29 verse 4 says of our God that the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. So when our God speaks, things happen. This is the God who spoke into nothingness and said, let there be. Let there be light. Let there be day, let there be night. And guess what? Nature is still responding to that voice today. 
Nature has no, no, no choice but to respond to the commandments of God. He's a God who speaks. He's not mute. He's a God that speaks. Unlike idols that have eyes but cannot see. Proverbs 15 verse 3 says of our God, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So no matter what we're doing, even when we think we're in darkness, God is seeing. Job 34 verse 21 says, For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all he's doing. God is an all-seeing God. Unlike idols that have ears but cannot hear, 1 Peter 3 verse 12. 1 Peter 3 verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Do you remember the battle of the prophets of Baal with Elijah? When Elijah was teasing the prophets of Baal, speak to your God, shout louder. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe you can wake him up. Did they ask the, 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 the God of Baal, the Baal did, they, did he respond? No, because he was no God. He was no God. They shouted, they screamed, they caught themselves, but there was no response. A God that has ears but cannot hear. But our God, he hears our cry. His ears are open unto our prayers. Jeremiah 16 verse 20. In the ESV version, it says, can, it, can man make for himself gods? Such things are not gods. They are not gods. They are the works of man's hand. These idols, they have noses, but they cannot smell. They can't smell. Whereas God can smell the aroma. When, he, when, we, when we pray, what, how, does it, how does scripture describe it? It's like an incense that goes up to God. And it's a sweet smelling aroma in his nostrils. But in Psalm, um, Psalm 135, 17, the B part says of these idols that are men are made by the hands of men, neither is there any breath in their mouth. There's no breath in their mouth. There's no breath in their nostrils. But our God, when we look at Genesis 8, 21, he says, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. So he can smell. And Genesis 2 verse 7 says that, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So our God is life-giving. The very essence of our being came from his nostrils. He breathed into us. Idols cannot give life because there is no life in them to give. But our God is the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 10 verse 10 says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. The gods that are not gods have hands, but they handle not. But Isaiah 59 verse 1 says of our God, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot say. Neither is his, hair, is his ear heavy that he will not hear. God speaks in Isaiah 50 verse 2. Isaiah 50 verse 2. He asks this question. Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? We know that God has power to deliver. His arms are not too short. He carries us day by day. Hallelujah. Amen. So these gods that are not gods, they have feet, but they cannot walk. But in Isaiah 66 verse 1, what the, what does the Bible tell us? He says, Thus said the, the, the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. So can you just have this picture of the earth? How big it is. But to God is just his footstool. It's where he rests his feet. That's where he rests his feet. That's how big our God is. He's an exceeding abundant God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are just a few pointers that choose to the hymn we are talking about. He is a mighty hymn. A powerful hymn. A majestic hymn. An exceeding abundant hymn. Hallelujah.
But not only is he all of that, not only is he able, he is able to do. He is able to do. Now unto him that is able to do. So he's a doing God. He's an active God. You know that we can have the ability to do something, but not do it. So we can be able, but we are not, we can, we may not be doers, but he is able and he is a doer. Amen. Amen. He is a doing God. In Isaiah 29, verse 14, he said that Isaiah 29, 14, he said, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do. I will proceed to do a marvelous work and a wonder. So he does marvelous works. He does wonders. In Jeremiah 32, verse 41, in Jeremiah 32, 41, he says, Yea, I will rejoice over them to do, to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. He is a doing God. He is a doing God. In Ezekiel 36, verse 37, he says this, Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of, of by the house of Israel to do to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. So he is a go, he's a doing God. He is a doing God. Hallelujah. In Zechariah 8:15. Zechariah 8:15. God says, So again, have I thought in these days to do, to do, he's a doing God, to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. So this God is the one. Who is looking upon us to do us good. He will do good to the house of Dominion Chapel. Amen. He will do good to every family here represented. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He is a doing God. Amen. You know I love this song. And as I was preparing yesterday. This song just came to my mind again. I don't know if you know it. God is working. He is still working. God is working even now. Though we often don't know just how God is working, He's still working, God is working even now. Hallelujah, He's working even now. Hallelujah, He's working even now. Though we often don't know just how God is working. He's still working. God is working even now. That tells me that even when things look quiet, when things look stagnant, when it looks like nothing is happening, God is working. He's acting. He's saving somebody. He's healing somebody. He's delivering somebody. He's lifting somebody up. He's elevating somebody. He's making a way where there seems to be no way. He's defeating principalities and powers on our behalf. He's a doing God. He is active. Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. So now, every moment is a now moment. Unto, we focus unto this God. Unto who? Unto him. Unto him who has all the attributes that we have looked at. Unto him who is able. This guy, this God, he is able. But not only is he able, he is active. Amen? Amen? But not only is he able and he is active, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. My goodness, what is the biggest thing that you desire from God? What is the biggest miracle you can imagine? Whatever it is, God can do more than that. He will exceed that. He can do over and above. Hallelujah. You know, the things that we observe, we consider to be great, massive, impossible. To God, it is like nothing. Is, it not, is this not the same God that says to God, is there anything too hard for me to do? Hallelujah. So the Greek word for the phrase exceeding abundantly is perisos, perisos, and this describes something that is beyond measure, something above the greatest abundance, 
something that is over and above, something that is extraordinary. So how extraordinary is your, what you're believing God for? How impossible is your situation? Our God is an exceeding abundantly God, abundant God, and he can do above all that we ask or think. Whatever it is we're thinking we need, he can do much more than that. He can exceed that. Isaiah 55 verse 9. Isaiah 55 verse 9. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Hallelujah. Amen. Those things that we seem, we think are impossible to him, it's like nothing. This is the God that will speak to a childless man in his old age and tell him that his descendants will number like the stars of the sky, like he did to Abraham in Genesis 15 verse 5. No children. And this God, this exceeding abundant God says to this childless man, you will have children, you can't even count them. Look at the sky. Count all the stars. If you can count the stars, so would you be able to count your descendants? An exceeding abundant God. Not only did he say that, he now used a 90-year-old womb to carry that child of promise. You know, when we look at this, you know, sometimes we read these stories and they're so familiar. But God, they, they, can you imagine 90-year-old woman? God said, you're going to have a child. That's why she laughed. She laughed. And how many times do we say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, but in our hearts, we're laughing. But he's an exceeding abundant God. Hallelujah. That is the kind of God that we're talking about in here. Hallelujah. 90-year-old womb, Genesis 17, 17. He carried that, that bore a child, the child of promise. This is a God that can the universe, galaxies, planets, seas, mountains. Let there be. Let there be. So if this God speaks into our life and says to our lives, speaks into our lives, let there be fruit. Guess what will happen? Fruits all over that place. God, this same God has said to me, prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. When he's talking about tithing, prove me if I will not pour out a blessing, open the window of heaven, pour out a blessing that you have room not enough to receive. This is the same God that said that. You know, so when you are considering gas bills, energy bills going up, I know we have to be prudent. This, this that. The economy is all over the place. But God says that if you do this, I will do this. So why don't you just do what God said you should do? Prove him. Prove him. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the same God. By whom the words, by whose words the, word, the, the, the world was made. Psalm 33 verse 6 says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. This is the same God that will take a few loaves and fish. And he will feed, he will multiply the fish, multiply the loaves. He will feed thousands. And guess what? At the end of it, there was more bread. There was more fish than there was at the beginning. Hallelujah. The fragments were more than they were before. You read in Matthew 14, 13 to 21. Matthew 14, verse 13 to 21. The, the story of the, uh, of the loaves and the bread. So there was more after people had eaten and were full, thousands, than there was at the start. Hallelujah. Amen. So now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, According to the power that worketh in us. Hello. That's a very curious statement. You mean that this superlative, extraordinary, abundant power is available to us? What? That it is it dwells in us? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So God has placed a semblance of that power 
in us. Hallelujah. Uh, this is not the topic today, but I pray in some time in the future we'll be able to delve in how to access the power of God that has been put in us. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. It says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? So that's one of the things. How do you access that power that is in you, that God has put in us? You believe. You have to believe. I had a situation this week. We were discussing, you know, I have, I don't want to say exactly where, but, you know, I had a cause to say something that, like this, that, well, for those who say something is impossible, it's impossible. For those who say it is possible, it is possible. But the moment you say it is not possible, it is not possible, you know. And God does a lot of mighty things through people who believe. Who believe. People who, I say this, sometimes it's offended people. I say that, look, realistic people, they don't achieve great things. They don't achieve great things. They may maintain things, but realistic people, they don't achieve great things. People who dare to believe. Who dare to believe they do great things. Yes. Why? Because they put themselves in a position where they take action that if God is not on their side, they're doomed. Yes. Yes. They dare to put themselves in a position where the power of God has to come through, otherwise I'm finished. They are the kind of people that will start a business without a single customer because they believe God has said so. They are people who will take steps that are ridiculous because they believe God has spoken. Amen? Amen. But the reasonable ones will go, you know, it's not, don't, you have to be realistic. It's rational. That is why when you're thinking of doing big things, someone who says it's impossible, just, just move away. Find someone who can agree with you. That is why I believe Married couples, God has given you something. If you and your spouse can agree on anything, God will do so many great things. You'll be wondering, God, how did this happen? I find that the more people are involved in a, in a decision, the more difficult it gets, because everyone has some idea or the other. To build unity is very difficult. But if we can all believe, if you have a company of believers, God will do mighty things. So we have to believe. So back to Ephesians 1, 19, 23. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. And what, is the ex um, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ. He wrought in Christ. That is another necessity. This is another way we access that power. We must be in Christ which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet. So all this power, all I mean, all these dominions, and thrones and principalities that are under Jesus' feet. And guess what? Gave him to be head over all things. So Jesus is head over all, all things to the church. To the church. So being part of the church, and I'm not just talking about Dominion Chapel here, the church, the body of Christ, that is another part of having access to this power. Amen? Amen. over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all so that's why we call the church the body of Christ we are the body of Christ and there's this flow of power that is available to us amen, amen. God has given that authority to the church Luke 17 verses 20 to 21 
Luke 17, 20 and 21. This was a question asked of Jesus Christ. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Is within you. Is within you. We are carriers of that power. We are carriers of that glory. Amen? Amen. But why is that glory given? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all the ages, world without end. So what is the purpose of all of that power that has been given to us? All of that authority that has been given to us is to give glory to God. And that's exactly what uh, Elder Emmanuel was leading us in prayer today. It's all to the glory of God. So when people see you walking in your God-given authority, what they should say is, wow, glory to God. Glory to God. When you are excelling in your workplace, in your education, in your family life, when God is blessing you, it's all for that purpose. to say, wow, glory to God. And then those who see you, who do not feel that they have what you have, guess what they will do? They will inquire. What is it? What is your, what is the, what is the source of your blessing? And you will then be able to say to them, it's my God. I was going nowhere in life. I had no clue what to do. God came through to me. He brought me to this place. We have all testimonies. You know, that is why some of our hardest places, some of our difficult places, the, the aspects of our lives that were very painful, God can use that to give us authority. You know, you can say to people, I can say to people, ah, there were years I didn't have children. I didn't have children. God came through for me. I can say to people, there were years we were broke, broke like church rats, couldn't pay our bills. God came through for me. There was a time when I didn't know which way to turn. God brought helpers to my life. Yeah. People who gave me counsel, who gave me comfort, who gave me instruction, yeah. who, gave me, um, who gave me advice. You can say that. But someone who has never encountered a problem in life, you're testing, well, I, I just want to say this. Sometimes let's look at our hard places in a different way a different perspective. When someone who has been through something tells you something, they're telling you out of experience. Yes. They know what they're talking about. Amen? Yes. And even in that place, what happens? The glory goes to God. Hallelujah. Yes. So all glory is to God. The church is meant to give glory to God. We do not glory in when we see the move of the power, the, the move of the spirit. When we see people walking, walking, doing miracles, that is great. But all glory is to God. Hallelujah. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all the ages. Isaiah 42 verse 8. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And what does the Bible say about us, the church? 1 Peter 2 verse 9. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So let us continue, continually question ourselves. How is my life glorifying God? Or is what I'm doing now glorifying God? Or is what the church doing glorifying God? You know, it's so sad when you see things like churches faking miracles. They, have, they, they concoct plans. I can't even imagine who would think of something like that. That means they do not fear God. They can't, because God knows, he sees 
you now go and concoct something with someone, you pretend as if you're lame, and when I put my hands on you, you jump up and say, but, but lies do not glorify God. What happens when people now realize that this is fake? It's like a reproach on the church. Amen? And we are not meant to bring a reproach. We don't have to fake it. If nothing happens, nothing happens. But we don't have to fake it. You now, oh God, help us. May the Lord help us just to, to do it right. Amen. Second Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. Second Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, For God who commanded light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So this is just a little reminder that no matter how God uses you, he will use you in a mighty way. But the power is not of you. It is not of us. It is of him. Amen. We have to remember that he is of him. So I just want to ask as we close, if you have anything on your heart that you have considered impossible, I want you to stand to your feet and just present it to God right now. Stand to your feet. Let's all stand to our feet, please. I'm not going to ask anyone to come out or anyone to speak up. It's just between you and your father. If there are things you even stopped asking him because you felt it's impossible. Say to him that, Father, today, on what, what's today's date? The 30th of October. I've heard this message and you've reminded me that you are an exceeding abundant God. And I bring this thing back to you, O oh God. And I ask you, O oh Lord, to speak into this situation and to resolve this matter. Give me a breakthrough in this area and I will glorify your name. Pray now, in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, all things are possible, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, all things are possible, Lord, I believe. Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive, all things are possible, Lord, I receive. And if you are in a place where you think you have not got access to this power that is made available to believers, because you have never given your heart, you've never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life. If you're in that place right now, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. This prayer is an invitation for the Lord Jesus Christ to become Lord of your life. He is the one that died for your sin. He is the one who paid the penalty and reconciled us to God and gives us access to all this power and all this, all, 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 all this, all his might. If you have never prayed this prayer and you'd like to do so right now, pray this after me. Let's all pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. Make all things near. I receive you as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, it's very essential that you are part of a Bible-believing church. I can recommend this one, Dominion Chapel, South Hall. Uh, and you, you go to a church where they're teaching the Word of God so that they can establish you, disciple you in the things of God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.